All right. We're live. We're live. I All know. right. It's been a while. I feel like there's this... Two years? Yeah, I think so, right? It's been that yeah. long? Things have changed? So. Uh, and then not so much. You you pulled up that... that uh, I think it was a thumbnail of the last video. I think I'm no. wearing the exact same... It's not the exact same black t-shirt, but it's a black t-shirt. And in a very empty room. And so not much has changed in that <laughs> aspect. But... Um, you're still Korean. Still Korean. Still, you have, still the have the same same haircut. Yeah, my, my fade's yeah. a little bit lower, and I have my black shirt still. Um, yeah. It is my staple. But I think I think aside from that, um, yeah. I guess what what prompted this was uh, just knowing that you. I mean, like it's encouraging, right? Because like I remember I remember talking to you like even three. I think probably like closer to four years ago. Uh, where where you were going through your own deconstruction process three like four or five years ago, oh, um, I remember when, I remember you know, well, I remember when you first came up to me. I remember work when I was working over at West Plano and you uh, you asked to hang out. We were I think we were working out one day, yeah. And, or no, you called me during a work. I don't remember. I think you either called me or we were working out together. It was during a workout oh. though, and uh, you were asking all these questions about like faith and Christianity. I was like, oh, I'm on. and in my mind, I was like, he's gone. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm apostatized. I, that's, yeah, that's in my in my mind, I was like, "Oh, he's gone. He's definitely he's crossed the line, and he's and he's out in the deep and deep end of the pool, and uh, there's no saving him." And so, <laughs> and so, in the back of my mind, I was just like, "Well, we're, I'm just gonna have to see where he goes with this." But um, back then, uh, as you were asking all these questions and doing, I'm you know, like exploring. I was, I, I remember talking to you and saying, "Like, you need to document all this." I said, "You need to start a podcast." Yeah, I did. I remember it. And I, I was like, this. Be because I, and, and this is the one of the reasons why I, I choose to stay in contact and like choose to invest into our like friendship and relationship. And I say this over and over again, like we, I've, we've known each other for like eight, nine years at this point since college. And it doesn't feel like that right. long, but like, it's a long time. Right. And so yeah. to see the, the development and the progression, the, like the deconstruction, the reconstruction, the back and forth, um, even in college, when we were a part of like university and the campus ministry, like, yeah, I mean, you were far from, I mean, you, when I first initially met you, you were like on the opposite extreme of, of what I believed at that time. Right. Like you were, wait, hardcore, was I? You were like hardcore Calvinistic, like, and I was, I was Calvinist for a time. Yeah. 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 Oh, I remember. I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. You were yeah. just, yeah you, yeah. you were just, you were black and I was, Oh, not it doesn't have to be i could be black it doesn't matter uh you were like you're, i was black and you were white like we were on the opposite ends of the extreme uh but um i think your ability to like really question and engage uh not be afraid to ask questions eventually right like yeah and, and even if it were like i think the scary part about it is that like in order for you to really learn or test something or see if it holds truth you just have to test it out you have to see what holds water, right? And people are often afraid to question their own truths, right? And their biases, because it means that you, well, in a sense, like your whole perception of life, this this construct of how you see, the, like the lens of which you see life might might all be wrong, right? Yeah. Um, and so I saw that within you and I, I felt that early on. And I was like, I don't agree with a lot of things, right? <laughs> or like a lot of the ways and that's that you've good. got- yeah, 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 and and a lot of the ways that you've gone through things, right? I'm just like, dude, that's kind of, that's pretty dumb. Or like, I'm just like, you know, like conventional <laughs> wisdom says not to, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like my gut said not to, and th but that also at the same time that challenged me too on my end. Um, and so, you know, anyway, like that we're just kind of digressing, but uh, yeah, I I remember saying like you need a you need a podcast, you need to document everything, right? Because it was interesting for me to watch. And I knew that at the same time, like the documentation of this progression would somehow in some way, um, if it benefits, I mean, not, not even only just for you, but like it was encouraging for somebody from the side to watch and see you walk through. And I think that gives people the empowerment to do so too. Um, all at the same time, like if it doesn't benefit anyone, it still benefits you, right? You're developing yeah. skills, you're develop, you're developing like, uh, the ability to do this without the praise or like the affirmation of anybody else. And that only reinforces your strength to be able to walk alone. 
um, and take these steps in which most people wouldn't be able to do, right? Well, so I appreciate the kind words, yeah. man. You know, to, to be fair, like going back on a point there where we're afraid to question our own biases. I, to be fair, that's not just Christians. That's everyone. Oh, yeah. and it's even like, even Absolutely. now, like it's very, it's very quite, very difficult. It really is. Um, and I think we're all, you know, we're always in a constant state of deconstruction, evolving, if we, right? Changing if, beliefs. If, right? if we choose to engage in it. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think we have so. to, I think people, I, I don't think that everybody is. I think actually a lot of people stay stagnant um, and don't want, because it's a, it's a very draining process um, to be in that mindset and position to always try to be growing and deconstructing um, and to be bettering yourself, right? Uh, I view it like seasons. I think there are seasons where, you know, where we do yeah. grow, we do deconstruct, and there are seasons where we just live and enjoy where we are, right? Um, until something kind of bops us in the head and says like, hey, like, maybe there's something that we can grow from. Yeah, man. It's a biblical principle. There are seasons. Yep. Oh my God, we're still following yep. the Bible. No. But with yep. that said, man, I'll, um, I want to add this stream there and you copied my hairstyle dude no i'm kidding <laughs> oh i guess i did man it was unconscious you know somehow you planted the seed and then it manifested but this will be interesting um it's always weird to see you you know see yourself recorded yeah. so i'm just gonna I was gonna see where this goes familiarize people with one is pentecostalism from your perspective and what you know what that was like but also, with your permission, of course. If, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this at one point two five. Okay. Just to, you know, because this is kind of a long stream, and yeah, here we go. If um, I can just ask you some questions, nail down nail down your current theology, and um, do a couple of thought experiments that probably will cause cognitive dissonance. I'm in a state of. I live in a state of cognitive, cognitive dissonance. You live in a state of cognitive I don't know where dissonance. Where I am, and I think that's okay, and I think that people have to be okay with that, right? I think people. Uh, I think people are afraid of not knowing or not being okay, um, and we we tend to stick or want structure or a sense of just knowing, right? We we want to be sure of, of of things, and I think there's a lot of things that we can't be sure of. And wow. to, and to admit and say that is hard for most people, right? Because I think a lot of people interpret that as weakness or or something. So, not even weakness. I think they interpret that as something that's shameful, or bad. But, um, I have to give it a moment. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I use the term weakness, but I get what you're saying. Mm. But that's interesting because five years ago, like, what would you have said to five years ago, Steve? Do you think five years ago, Steve would have believed that? Probably not. Um, no. I mean, no, probably not. Okay, let me just stop there. Anything you wanted to, to comment on? No, I agree with past me. This is like time travel. <laughs> is, this is like technically time, like time travel, isn't it? Like it's a moment in time yeah. and space. And we, anyways, never mind. Yeah, I'll agree with the same yeah. thing. You still live in a state of cognitive dissonance, Steve? Um, I guess so. I'm just more at peace with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, even more secure about it than like than before. Mm. I you just you, I think the longer you live, you just, the more you realize like oh everybody doesn't know what the hell is going on. Like co like even within the last two years, like COVID, um, the state of the economy, like and yet like so I mean this is all it's again like everything circles back together, right? And this is why one of the reasons why I like Ecclesiastes is that like Ecclesiastes like everything's in seasons, nothing is new under the sun. Right. What has happened will happen again. Right. There is no new. Everything is just a recycled ideas and thoughts just within context to a new language or culture or whatnot. Right. And so, uh, yeah, the longer you live and the longer you experience and interact with people and just, I think, observe different cultures, um, even within like a five, 10 year span, like you start realizing and seeing within society, like it's the same thing all over again. It really is. Right. Or like, have you had that realization whenever you like, uh, 
uh, what is it? You, you're like, remember when you're like a like a preteen, like and you're like twelve or thirteen years old, like, um, and you think you're cool and you think you understand the world, and you turn eighteen oh, yeah. and you're like, man, you look at wow. now you look at twelve or thirty, you look at the twelve or thirteen year olds now, and you're like, you guys are stupid as shit, like, oh, and yeah, annoying, man. right? And annoying, but like they, but like the eighteen year old will look at the twenty five year old and say the same thing, and the twenty five oh, yeah. will look at the eighteen year old and say like, you guys are still dumb, and like it's all pre like so it's, everything is cyclical, right? But at the same time, we I. I think we just the more I interact with people and talk and get to know people in, in different stages of life, different places from different, I mean, like different socioeconomic um, people that look like they've made it and people who look like they're in shambles. Like everyone just, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're quote unquote getting by on this piece of rock that's spinning thousands of miles an hour. And we're just trying to figure out what existence is and what we make of it, right? Or what to make of it. Uh, and that's where we start, right? <laughs> no one has it together. No yeah, one has it together. It. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. faking it, man. That's a good lesson. All right. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I feel, like, I, I feel like we were both at a place where we we're pretty sure in our faith, right? Um, I have more, and even more so, like uh, compared to a lot of our peers, like we, you and I, when we were back in college, um, I mean, like, not like downplaying it to anybody else, but like in terms of it's with, with you specifically too, right? Like um, with where we were apologetics and our faith, and like just being really well studied and well versed um, within our faith and, and doctrine. Like, I mean, we, I mean, you, you know, like we've had plenty of conversations like day after day, like two, three years at a time. So, yeah, uh, those are fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it still is, right? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well, how would you, how would you describe yourself? Would you still label yourself like a Christian? Still follow Jesus? Would yeah. you? Yes. Yes. But I'm not sure what that entails. Got it. I'm sure we'll dive into that as we kind of progress the, um, the conversation more. But yeah. um, still, I would still label myself as a Christian. I still believe in God. I still believe that salvation comes through Jesus Christ. But um, I, it's, I don't know that I would be as so rigid in black and white as I was several years ago. Hmm. Especially pertaining to like doctrine and, and the oneness thing. And, oh, oh. Yeah. And, well, not the oneness. Yeah. But, yeah. As we'll talk into about it, like one this and the whole Trinitarian um, doctrine debate. So. Uh, all right, just wanted to pause there because this is the fun part, Steve. Mm. The answer is no. <laughs> Did I get it right? Oh. I was going to ask if you would not give me a million dollars. The answer is no. So now you have to give me a million dollars. So no. Thank you so much. No. To the second question. <laughs> So no, as in no, you're not you're not a Christian. <laughs> Depends on who you ask, right? That's, that's Depends on who answer. you ask. Depends on who you ask. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's it's. I I don't know, and I and I, and that's the like that's always a hard question to answer. It's like, well, do you believe? Are you like, are you Christian? Like, because I still believe in a in God, a God mm -hmm. or God. The question is: Is it specifically and solely through Christ or this per this person that we call Christ? I yeah. What, There's just a lot of yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like when when we last, you know, in this interview when we last spoke two years ago, I think you were still fairly like orthodox. You were just right. kind of in the beginning stages of, hey, it's okay to not know. Sure. Yeah. So. What do you think changed? Like what 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 shifted you to to here to where you're like, okay, I don't know if it's necessarily through Christ alone. Yeah, um I started questioning a lot more things that were uh I guess reinforced and taught and encouraged in church um and then religion in general and I, I, in realizing that so many things, like we said, like that weren't so black and white, right? That was taught so right or wrong within church, um, and within scripture and doctrine. I, I was like, I don't think anybody really knows, like, what really is, what really is, who God is, like, what He is, and we're just a bunch of people that are just trying to stamp out rules to more or less perceive like or give us a, a sense of security and in thinking that we have it put together when we don't um 
so I started questioning a lot more of the the standard traditions and the thoughts um, that church, the general like idea within church had, right? Um, mm. Things regarding relationships or how to interact within relationships, uh, cursing, drinking. Mm. Um, what else? Like, there's, I mean, there's so many things, right? Like these. Uh, what I, I guess, I guess, just bring it back. So many things I started realizing were so contextual to the culture, but right, like, um, like, like, oh. you're talking about like Christian culture, like church culture, that, and about? also just like generationally, like, like 21st century, as opposed to even 1900s or like, like even like, like, how was the church culture? or church and the culture that we live in different from like even a hundred years ago. Yeah. And like what values within that time has bleeded into our 21st century culture that we still, that maybe church or, real, or just religion in general or culture in general might try to uphold that, but that's not, does not fit or like still uh, make sense to us at this time and yeah. age. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, I mean, like in asking those questions and, and, realizing that nobody really had a good answer i was like well i don't feel like anybody really knows then <laughs> right mm. like the common thing i tell you is like well in regards to like um you know so within within uh church and especially within uh i don't know what you would call it like i we grew up pretty like you know i told you before right the the, the culture of the church of the pentecostal church uh, where purity was a huge thing, not just yeah. inward, but outward. Right. And so things like you couldn't cut your hair, no makeup, no jewelry Wait, girls. Yeah. Yeah. Cut no makeup, hair. no jewelry, not no cutting your hair. And that's why you see a lot of like, like when you see like, like really, really strict or like to the book Pentecostal churches, mm -hmm. not a lot around, but there's still some around. Uh, they'll still trim it, of course. Right. To maintain it. But like, they don't, they they really look down on this um on on cutting your hair at a certain length for females oh, okay, um, got for, you. yeah for females not for males okay got you stuff like stuff like you know girls can only wear skirts and should not mm -hmm. wear men's clothing like you know uh shorts or pants right and so all the females um if you you know like would will look be like would be looked down upon if you wore anything else other than like a dress or a skirt right feminine mm. clothing right same thing with guys but also with the guys like even when i was growing up up, to, up until like 15 or 17 years old like i remember that my parents would not allow me to wear shorts out in public because it was <laughs> too, too revealing right and it yeah. was not an outward expression of living holy or being uh modest right of being modest and and tempting you know the opposite gender and you just never and, know man they just might look at your calves and just and i've had somebody <laughs> comment on my calves before at whole foods <laughs> okay all right hey my mistake you're right yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely calves, man. yeah so uh but but I, I bring up stuff like that because um you know like it, what was i saying Holiness. I drink. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. So I, I, we, I look at standards like that and then look back even like, even within scripture, right. I use this example fairly frequently, like even within scripture, like in the old Testament, uh, where it was fairly common for, in terms of like the definition of our relationships nowadays of monogamy, um, and, or how dating and courting, uh, or even bearing children and all that stuff. Like, that looks completely and drastically different than 2000, 4,000 years ago. Yeah. Like even in scripture, you see, you see specifically and blatantly, like, like it was the norm for people to have slaves, not saying that it's right or wrong, right. Or okay. But like, that was the norm and it was okay back then. Right. Like, how is that to be judged? Like before God's eye, is it like just different because they didn't know? Right. Like apparently, apparently, <laughs> right. Right. Or even like having them bearing children, right. Like, it was very common for for people or yeah for people if like their wives were barren to have children with their slaves yeah to extend the family line right um stuff like that that it for us we look at it as like oh that's disgusting that's not right um but 
I don't know, like who's who's to say how that's just before God's eye. And then if you just throw out the uh, get out of jail free card and says like only God knows, and then I'm like, well, how do you know that what we're doing isn't the same thing, right? Where we're doing something Holy wrong, Spirit. and we're just with, and we're just blind to see it, right? Yeah, yeah, we just can't see it within because we're within our cultural bubble too. And a hundred years from now, people look back and say like, oh, what they were doing was disgusting too, or like how they were doing it was wrong too. And only God should judge them. So I, I think whenever it comes to now that I view it, I'm just like, I I don't think that any of us really know, right? What is like 100% right or wrong? Um, and I don't think that most things are black and white as long as, I mean, there's a few things like, right. like don't go murder. Yeah. But um, well, even then, right? There's, I'm sure there's certain contexts where quote unquote murder would be sure, would be like yeah, self defense yeah. or like, you know. Right. right. Very certain context. And of course, that's that's a whole debate on ethics. Yeah. And it's it gets it gets complicated, man. Right. It does. Right. Well, on a yeah. on a on a small scale of, you know, having an argument between two individuals and, and the broad scale of even like two countries going to war at each other. Right. Yeah. Like like in the name and under the banner of, quote unquote, God. Right. I, who's who's right or wrong like and yeah. then even in scripture like we see like thou shalt not kill but if you're going to war under the banner of god right for god it's okay it's okay <laughs> right and it's just like and yeah. it's yeah again like it's like where where how do we decide that is decipher what is right like and yeah. then we, again we oh, the only thing we can say is like only god knows and it's like i think that's a, a bs yeah it's, it's, it's the whole answer right Right. It is a cop out answer. And I understand what they're getting in that. Like, yes, there's like mystery. Of course, I get that. But like everyone says that everyone sure. says God's ways are higher than our ways. And it, you make a good point. I think this is one of my main contentions with, um, you know, modern Christianity is if you just put a if you slap a God label on it, it makes it OK. Or you can't as long as it. God said. Right. Sure. So we can't murder, but if God does it, well, it's God. He can do whatever he wants. And then we just, we end up calling good evil and evil good just by slapping a God label on it, you know? Right. Yeah. And then even growing up within a specifically charismatic church, right? Uh, so things such, we're, we're like things like prophetic gifts, speaking in tongues, words of knowledge. And you've had experience with that too, right? I think yeah, we're talking fun about stuff. a little bit. Like, right. Well, this is, I think that's where the danger really comes in, uh, yeah. is that like, how do we know for sure? How do we know for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that this is really, again, like, and then they can slap on the God label, like God told me. It's like, there's no way to. Oh, yeah, dude. I yeah, can go on no on that. Validate that. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that it can't happen and doesn't happen. But um, once that door is open, like you can't, once that box is open, you can't close it. Right. And I think this is why, and I understand even back then, I understand why, like, uh, like, like, uh, when, whenever we were out practicing those things and ex like really delving in and, um, into the culture of the charismatic church, why a lot of like, it scares a lot of people within more of the, uh, traditional <laughs> like, Baptist and right. uh, Christianity. Right. Um, no. because of that same reason, they're like, it's too dangerous. We don't know. It may work, but like to, to normalize that is is too dangerous and so they'd rather cut it and like cut it off completely and say that don't try to seek it out or practice it right uh because the danger i think i guess what they're saying is like the, the dangers of the payoff of what could happen is far more than right i don't know right? they have a point right there's yes, been many many abuses there's a lot of um charismatic uh, uh charismania or charismatic chaos Mm -hmm. and uh you know it's a point it, it's a fair point i i understand yeah. the the caution um i guess like personally where i find myself now i'm still you know i, I still hold things from the charismatic movement that i i find valuable you know and i think hey man it's a fun time man it's a fun time when everyone's speaking in tongues and you, you got the music going and like you're in a trance yeah. you know and hey it's fun times so but that's what I, I guess, yeah. I guess kind of lasting on to that is I think in understanding more about human behavior and psyche, like you do understand, like it is a trance, it is susceptibility, even as you're, mm -hmm. you've studied um, like hypnosis, right? Like it's a state of mind 
um, people are easily influenced, right? Especially when you come into a context, context of a church or religion seeking answers, right? And this is my biggest concern is that I, I, in no way am I saying that I'm not against church. I think that church and organized religion has its place. And I think it has done a lot um, and it can help a lot of people, but it can also be very indirectly misused in controlling people um, in the sake of, I mean, with the banner of like trying to help people. It's God. Yeah. You're right. Well, God said. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's the thing. Well, damn, we're already 25 minutes in and we just got what? Like, Dude, we're <laughs> not going to get through this whole thing. We're not going to. Yeah. No. Well, I might have to skip some stuff. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Well, let's, we'll just play this. Uh, well, that's good that you are still a Christian because that's what I have in the title. I don't know if you saw the title. Did you see well, I, I, saw, I saw several of them, right? Like, you no. Know, like previous one this and all that and so like i i don't i don't know what i would consider myself like yeah i call you an honest christian no well, thanks <laughs> still an honest christian yeah i'm honest well, so, i don't i'm honest I, I, i'm an I honest guy because like we don't talk about this all that much but so you grew up in the one of pentecostal which denomination like what, what was the denominational name of that apostolic oneness pentecostal apostolic oneness pentecostal is that that's not with you um the same as upc is it upc united UPC and upc i i think are similar but they are distinct in their own ways okay so it's like okay person got it. apostolic so what was that kind of like if you could describe maybe just like share your your testimony i guess like what that was like growing up in a pentecostal household i think my you know real quick because this uh. there might be um this might be a long story um i'm wondering maybe you just skip this no, i don't know fine. where hmm where's the good part is the thing bro just just click just click just and click and middle. click and click still way heavily on this um regarding a lot of my decisions and a lot of and for the reason for why i believe the way i do is um the biggest common thing that i that i felt convicted and compelled towards was um, and, and a lot i think a lot so too with a lot of people that grew up in christianity or with christian faith um, or those that actually leave is just um, what we're, what you see and what people are bearing through out of their lives, right? Um, so with that, within the Gospels, within the New Testament, Testament especially, um, there's a lot of emphasis on bearing fruit. So not a lot of analogies and a lot of um, um, comparisons to like that we, if, if we are truly abiding within Christ, if we truly have Christ in our lives and the Spirit dwelling within us, like we, like you will bear fruit even if you don't want to, right? Like as a tree, like. If you're if you are growing, you will bear fruits. Yeah, a very well, a good a good tree. A good yeah. tree, right, yeah. right, right. Um, and so, with that simple concept, I I looked at people within my denominations that I grew up with, and I looked at people that were within university and then also outside churches. Um, and I think that you can genuinely say like, it's not hard to spot a Christian if they're genuine within the faith um, by the way they speak, by what they say, and by the, by the morals of their life, right, and what they stand by. Yeah, um, and those are what I would call fruits, right? Hey, yeah, real quick, um, I don't know if it's maybe your mic, um, but there's like a like a shit ton yeah. of background noise, like right. skip it this. like increased in the last one so, 10, 20 seconds. I guess, I guess, um, what a, I, I mean, yeah, I'd say that my viewpoints just in general was because, yeah, like I, I think about two, three years ago, I was still in this boat of like. Yeah, I'm not. I don't. I wouldn't consider myself oneness anymore. I would just consider myself Christian. At this point, I'm not even sure like where I would be on that Christian spectrum. Just kind of like, <laughs> because, just like we mentioned, like 15, 20 minutes ago. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I, I have a question here. So let's yeah. let's suppose you did consider yourself Christian in some okay. regard. Like, how would you describe that? For yourself, I believe, but that's the thing is that I I I hesitate in answering <laughs> that because okay okay because the only thing that grounds me as that would even ground me even I, I like the principle and the values that that Christ taught, uh, and I believe there's a God and I think that's it, like even the death, better real, and the resurrection of Christ. Like I'm, I sit there, and I wonder, and I think like is this necessary, right? Like is 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 it the act of Christ and his life what defines me as a Christian or is it the effect of or the idea of what he did and, and the meaning of, of what that life? Because I don't like I, I, I question like the, the validity of his existence, too. 
Oh, right. we can get into that. Yeah. Right. Well, I just, I don't know. Like, I just, I'm not, I'm not well versed or researched enough to like to say, right. Cause you know, like there's books like the case of Christ, like where it goes or like even like the apologetics of, of um, that argue like, Oh, like the, the life of Christ is the biggest, has the biggest historical impact mm -hmm, um, within mm -hmm. all of history. And so it is the biggest case for Christ. Right. And his existence and who he really was. Um, maybe. Yeah, it's it's a skewed case. I'll say that. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like I mean, Gandhi was a good guy, and he made a pretty big impact, and he's in textbooks, and he changed a bunch of lives and ideology, right? Uh, but you know what they're gonna say, right? Goes, well, but Jesus <laughs> claimed to be God, and right. Look what at the Gandhi facts. And, well, yeah, I don't even know what. I don't. I don't think he claimed to be God. <laughs> I no. I don't think he did. No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. 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 But. Yeah, I, I was. Kinda, yeah, go ahead. Well, um, I, I was gonna say like if, if you ever if anyone's watching or even even for you, Steve, um, I actually thought it was very worthwhile. Um, Richard Carrier, he's actually written a book on the historicity of Jesus, and he's one of the like. There's only there's a few mythicists out there like scholars, and he's one of them. I would say he's probably not that I'm again like I'm not super well researched in this debate, but I I listened to his book, and. I have to say, it was very persuasive. It really mm. made me doubt. I'm like, hmm, maybe there isn't a historical Jesus. Isn't, is not. Not, there is not. Oh, maybe yeah, there is not. Yeah. Now, I entertain that idea. Yeah. I don't think I'm fully convinced. Sure. But I, I would say, like, he's probably had, he probably has the best case. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I guess even if you took that out of the equation, like, whether Jesus was real or not, like, if these principles and ideologies like that the, the Bible portrays and pushes, right? Like if Christ were not real, like, but all these, like, it still sounds good. Like yeah, I still no. want them to be good. Right. Like the teachings and the wisdoms that are found within it. Uh, and I think that's the second point is that like, I look at it historically and I'm just like, is scripture infallible in that sense? Right. Infallible in that sense. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where it starts getting a little shaky. So like there's the existence of Christ. And then aside from the existence of Christ, like, do I fully believe in like all of the scripture and texts uh, and I'm believing it word for word ver verbatim, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you see that shift even now within the culture that you talk to a lot of people. Like you talk to people like 10 to 15 years ago and they're like, no, like most people would say like, absolutely. Like scripture is inherent word of God. Like everything in it is meant to be read. And interpreted like and then you had people studying like the original greek and hebrew and and uh i don't know that seems really optimistic man <laughs> well i mean i, I don't yeah, know <laughs> i mean in, in optimistic sense but but now more specifically when i talk with people engaging they're like yeah like but you can't take it literally yeah, like i hear yeah. that a lot mm -hmm. i hear, I hear that, that a lot, lot. Too. Yeah, yeah exactly and I'm, so it's like if you, yeah. if you can't take it literally at this point i'm like what do you draw out of it right yeah because at and this we, point we just cherry pick. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And maybe that's that's a good topic to go on because, in a sense, I think we're all cherry picking. Sure. Yeah. It, because it's it's just based on the the lens in which you view scripture. What what is scripture even like? What are your presuppositions when it comes to what is the Bible? How do we what what does the Bible consist of? Right. All that yeah. stuff. How should we interpret it? And these are like the base fundamental you know, lens, uh, presuppositions that we come with. And so through whatever lens you pick from, right? Like that's, that's where you're going to pick and choose whatever verses fit into your sure. particular worldview, you know? Yeah. So I get the, the, um, um, a lot of people like and me included, <laughs> I would say a lot of people criticize like progressive Christians because they're like, okay, well, you're just cherry picking. Well, I think that's true. And yeah. I think everyone does, you know, I it think, just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just depends on what your background is. And, and also like why you're drawn to religion. Cause I think in order for, I mean, we're already here. I, and this is not processed by any means or refined. So I'm just uh -huh. thinking out loud. Yeah. I'm thinking out loud. I, and like, I think we gain, like, I think there was more of a need um, of religion pr like prior to the 21st century. Right. Like everything has become so developed now to where like, 
I think a part of the reason why we see this kind of diminishing of this absolute structure of church and religion that we were so, you know, that people stuck to so and, and clung on to so hard and the, and the ideology and doctrines that were taught within church, I think we're, we're getting to a point within society and just the world in general where we have things so good and things are so accessible and we don't have as many needs to where right. we don't really need to go to church. And so like, again, like I, I draw back to the point, you go within a congregation or church and like everybody's there for a reason security they need answers to a question they're suffering emotionally physically psychologically from some kind of pain or loss right and they want answers they need want comfort right um but let's say like like on a day where you don't need anything and you're like i'm pretty good are you more more or less inclined to go yeah to be seeking out I, answers and like yeah yeah i mean i do think there is the person who truly they, they feel good and they're a believer and they go to church to like sure. serve so to speak right yeah 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 but yeah i think for the majority of people look i i think church is a good thing man and and it just reminded me of the the word religion i guess the etymology apparently um from latin means to like bind or a, a, a possible etymology i don't want to mm -hmm. be like this is it but a possible etymology means to to bind which not like binding like um it's not like binding so you can't move but like binding society yeah. binding people together and i still think that's necessary so i don't know what's yeah, gonna absolutely. what's like i'm really interested to see you know, would will America be more like Europe in the next two, three decades where it's like almost completely godless? Uh, I don't know. And is I that a good so, thing? Yeah, is, I don't know. I think it's I think it's very ingrained in the culture. Well, we're, we're seeing that shift. Right. And I think that's also the reason why is that the need based is the need base of of religion and God is is diminishing right so the needs are becoming less and less in in the sense that like we're, we're able to get more answers outside of church i think with the acts the development and the access of technology and internet like we're like more and more answers are coming out and accessible to as opposed to having to go to a spiritual leader for that right i, well, I see what you mean like like yeah. more information sure is that yeah, what yeah. you're saying yeah 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 okay yeah, yeah. um to a lot of the questions that we might have. And then also just realizing like, oh, like the church doesn't have all the answers or like if there's if there's a disparaging, um, if there's information that goes against what religion and like science says, right? Then you almost have to come to a point to where like in most cases, like people have to choose. Like, let's say like new world, old, old, old earth, right? Like, yeah, like yeah. again, f 15 years ago, like there would be this huge, huge division and divide um, where people are like, no, the earth is 7,000 years old because according to the Bible, and if we time it out on a timeline, that's how old the earth would be. And then we have all this science and data coming out saying like, we think it's older. <laughs> and then, and then if, if you believe that you would be, you'd be outcast, right? Yeah, exactly. I think in certain uh, circles, um, but now sure. you have the yeah. flat earth and all that, you yes. know? Oh yeah. It just so, keeps on going. You so, know. But back to that point, I think that uh, because church did, there was more of a need for guidance and a place to get answers. And back 50, 100 years ago, thousands of years ago, church gave the most compelling answers of like giving reasons for life and existence, right? Um, meaning to life. Uh, and now we're coming to a point where we're, I think we're becoming more self like realizing and like individually oh. and having, yeah. But also, so like, I think that's why uh, the evolution of church too, is that people are, are, are complaining like, oh, like church is just becoming a big old show now, sh entertainment show, right? Where sometimes. you have all these, sometimes, yeah, yeah. And I think a part of that is why, why is because, well, like if one of the biggest and main factors for why people gather in a congregation or a church or religious place is for community, well then why would you not, orientate your services or um your your uh, your messages to be much more like appealing right like more fun mm -hmm. more engaging more entertaining right yeah, and that's one of the reasons why yeah yeah exactly and so i it's double as short i don't know like would a church prosper as much if they didn't 
adapt to the culture's like uh, style of entertainment or yeah. like way of, way of speaking. Um, you have a lot of churches that argue like, no, like you just keep it like plain and simple and like the Bible or the word does the job. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. I don't think, I don't think so. You don't Some see people like it. Some, yeah. But, but I, I agree by and large, I feel like you do need to spice it up somehow relevant. Cause I think they're, I think, I think churches are realizing they, they can't really keep people. Sure. Yeah. You know? So, but again, like I it's, get it. it's, it's, and in working with a lot of small businesses, like I've been, I've been, I, I get to see like my, my eventual goal is to own it, own my own business or gym. And so I've, I've been, I've been working with a lot of smaller businesses. I, I listen to a lot of business podcasts, business leaders, their insights, their reflections, you know, and all that stuff for the past four or five years. At, um, and so you realize like even within a church, like I'm talking about more of the physical organization and the building of a church, it's still a business. It needs to oh, yeah. operate. It's still, it still operates like any other business. If you don't have money, it's like you're just not gonna have a building out of nowhere. Like if a if a church is huge, they have some like very sound like I mean, there's there's things going on under the works, right? To where organizationally, uh, financially, like structurally, like there's meetings happening every day. How do we get more engagement? How do we get more people through the door? Like what's missing? Yeah. And so it's all business tactics too. And and not saying that church is a business and that it's only there for money. That's not what I'm saying, but uh, I think we'd be foolish to say, like, if we don't realize those things, too, and that the same tactics as marketing and advertising and, and other businesses use, like, churches use also, right? Yeah, and I think, I don't think that's necessarily bad. No, I mean, not. I guess it can be. And, and I think in one perspective, it can be. But I, because I, I want an organization to be organized. Sure. You know, you yeah. don't want to get there and, like, it's it's complete chaos. There's no... You know, there's there's zero organization or zero admin, or, you know. But. Yeah. Well, the reason why I bring that up is because I think if you understand it from a business perspective and saying like mm. it's, 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 it's economics, yeah. we are providing a service or something for people to come in through the doors. Yeah. If that quality of service or that product is not up to standards or above average, people will not come through the door. It's true. So when you when you look at a church perspective, like. It's like, oh, it's for God. Okay. But like, realistically speaking, people aren't getting anything out of this experience with God, with the people, with the community at that church. People would stop coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Especially in Texas, man. What's what? I mean, when you I got, mean, you got three right. churches on every corner. So yeah, you're absolutely. like competing against all these other churches. And then, and then why is that? Like, why is it that we have churches on every corner, but like, we just can't, why can't we be like, Hey, like, we'd like to join together and like, you know, politics, like, why is that? Oh, exactly. Human politics. It's and yeah. No. no politics and business. And, I, and that's, again, that's one of the reasons why I, I, I feel so disconnected and so burnt out from just organized religion right not saying it's a bad thing but like i feel like there's too much politics and too much um too much people and pride getting in the way right yeah. like people have like would, would churches be okay not growing at all and if so why not right um if if you hold and stick to the bible and standards and say like what if like it was a good well-intended like well-intending like pastor and congregation but they never grew more than like 10 or five, like five or 10 people. Would they be satisfied or okay? So like, like, I think I tell you this, um, and just full transfer, like my, my, because my dad's a pastor, mm -hmm. like we, he, he moved, he, he became a pastor. He basically dropped everything in his life to become a pastor. Right. Um, before I was born. And then when I was born, um, they moved down from California to Texas because they, they felt a calling like they, and it's one of those, again, it's one of those spiritual kind of stories where like they had a dream or like they felt called to Texas and then like somebody called them out of nowhere that they hadn't talked to like in several years. And so, okay, like we had a dream last night that you had a big congregation in Dallas. Really? And like, yeah, like stuff like that. Like, 
they okay. they're like okay. they're, they had, they felt called to 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 sell the house and move to Dallas. Somebody called that very next day, someone who they hadn't talked to in like years, and they said they had a dream um, that they had, they saw a church with my dad and, like, and all this stuff. And so and then and then they put the house on the market, and then one of the family friends bought it like the next month. Like it was one of those like chain of events where it was mm. boom, boom, boom. And so like how and then so yeah so. My parents have devoted their whole lives to this ministry and church. And we've been here in Dallas for about 18 to 20 years. Um, but our congregation has not grown, right? Frankly speaking, it's been my family, my aunt and uncle, maybe one or two families that come and go. But even now, like it's no more than seven to eight people per service. And that's mm. our family and our extended mm. family, right? Yeah. And yeah. so, and I've had this conversation with my dad um, like a year or two ago where he's like, even if it was just myself in that service, like I will continue preaching this gospel until I die. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just like, I respect that. Right. And yet at the same time, I'm just like, most churches would stop and shut down. Right. I, I don't know. I, I, I admire their tenacity. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. I do yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but, but if going again, going to scripture, like, you know, and, and like they say the same thing every time to me, like they see me every Sunday, they're like, Hey, you need to bring your friends to church. And like, I'm like, they're already going to a different church. Like, I'm not going to pull them away from it. Right. But yeah, what's the but, point? The, but, but yeah, but they're like, this is the truth. This is absolutely, I'm like, <laughs> and well, so like, this is yeah. my, this is my thing yeah. is that like, I'm, I, I'm sitting here saying like reading scripture, I'm just like, you're, you're believing that no one comes to the father except through through christ right like you can't pull them you can't take them away like it is up to god or the holy spirit right working on them in their lives and the, and god is the one pulling the strings right ultimately like paul says i water it but ultimately the growth ultimately comes from god yep. i'm just like why are you trying so hard to push and pull people to like church or like any specific church like aren't you trusting and believing that god will make those moves in their lives when it's the right time right like and so it, it and that's the thing is that i i never understood why there was such a big emphasis on like trying to control people's salvation when we constantly preach like it's not up to us right i guess it, it gets into the whole uh free will predestination yeah. debate you know yeah, yeah no yeah yeah no i agree man it's um it's this weird I think there's there's so much cognitive dissonance when it comes to evangelism for mm -hmm. Christians. Because these like evangelism trainings, you know, which I was a part of and you were a part of, and you sure. know, we would train people in this, right? And and uh tell people exactly what you said. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. But you should come. <laughs> but you still have to do it because they're gonna go to hell. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's just kind of like this, I think. I think we, and again, I'm not, I believe in some kind of higher power and divinity. So not, yeah. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just, I can't help but feel that I think we say we Christians tell themselves that line. Like it's, it's don't, just don't worry. You know, you're going to just leave it up to God. It's just the Holy spirit that doesn't work because I think there's too much cognitive dissonance Sure. To think that it's all up to you to try to save people from hellfire, you know, yeah. in which this, this, all the whole system that God created, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then, yeah. you know, and I think there's just too much cognitive distance there, but anyways, I digress. No, definitely. Yeah. No, no. All right. Let me see if I can find a good think at some point. Aha. You use your phone at some point. We'll see. We'll see where this takes us. Probably the computer fan. The computer fan probably over here. I mean, it was a laptop, so that's probably why. Got it. Nice. Cool. I don't remember the last thing you said. Fruits. Bearing fruit, fruit. tree. Yeah. You, so were you saying like you, you saw other people like, hey, these guys are Roses. Christian and they love Jesus too, but they yeah. don't believe in, in oneness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And can you actually go ahead and break that down? Like what, yeah. what do you think like oneness – Pentecostals teach. So, I mean, the biggest thing is, I mean, the one is in the Trinitarian um, position of the Godhead, right? So Trinitarian belief is, or I guess 
uh, the viewpoint of the Godhead is that God is three persons in one, triune in one, right? So distinct in the persons of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, one in essence, one in, I, I could be butchering this, um, one in spirit, right, as God, and yet within the persons or their roles or their characters and distinctions, they're different. Is that right? Okay. You, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, yeah. Were you, sorry, were you, were you articulating Trinitarianism or were you articulating? Uh... Yes. yes. Okay. I think you have to use the word persons as like there's multiple distinct persons. Right. Distinct yeah, yeah. Persons, but, yeah, that's like a key. One, but one God in essence. Right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Not three separate gods. And I think actually, so I'm going to pause it here, but I think you actually get to this, I believe, or I'm just maybe remembering yeah. our conversations at some other point, but like, Let me, yeah. The average Christian, me included, until I actually started looking into this, yeah. the average Christian does not know the doctrine of the Trinity. <laughs> you know, they can't articulate it. I will, t I, will, I will articulate the Trinity or the oneness, and they'll be like, "That's yeah, that's right. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. that's what you said. I'm like, that is not what, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the intriguing thing, isn't it? Like, it's, it's, it's even if we don't know what it is, like when I've talked to ministers or pastors, I'm like, Hey, like I come from oneness background and they're like, what is that? Right. And they don't fully understand it. They're like, but they're, they're we're, we're all the, most evangelicals are, are just so pre-programmed to say like, if it's not the Trinity, no matter how, I mean, like, if, even if you don't understand or comprehend it, like it's wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, man. Yeah. I mean, I was there. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like with nutrition. When I work with a lot of people, they're like, fat or fats are bad. Right. I'm like, why? No, I mean, no, but it, it's been, it's been so indoctrinated within our culture that mm. fat are bad for us. Meat, red meat are bad for us. Meat is bad for us. I'm like, what do you eat? Carbs? No carbs are bad for us too. So proteins but Vegetable. not red meat or <laughs> yeah exactly it's just like it's it's really weird and so people again p i think people naturally want to be told what to do and what to believe because it makes again it it, it just makes things so much easier it we does don't have to, yeah, yeah yeah absolutely right but no. there's no, <laughs> nothing is as simple as a yes or no answer nowadays yeah Dude, I, I was i was i'm sorry go ahead no, no, no. What were you going to say? <laughs> I, was, I was listening to uh, uh, another podcast or YouTube while I was getting ready and I was washing out before this. And uh, this this pertains more specifically like to exercise and uh, nutrition. And they said, you know, like we, we have this idea that like resistance training or like exercising, like exercising and burning calories helps us reduce weight. And what they found within a study of like a few thousand people is that the more people exercised, the more they're Bait, like their basal metabolic processes, so like the basic process of, of our body, like digestion, um, just na the, the natural things our body has to do to stay alive day to day without any additional functions on top of that, right? Those functions actually decrease in the amount of, the amount of energy expenditure, expenditure, expenditure they go through. So in other words, the more active we are and the more that we do, they found a correlation of a decrease in the basal metabolic processes. So when, when as you think that you're burning more calories overall, your body's actually shutting down more of its basic processes, right? Oh. Ma making it almost even out to a certain extent, right? Huh. So you, ever, you ever done a hard workout, like a really tough workout where you're just yeah. like drained and exhausted? Yeah. What do you yeah. feel like the rest of the day? You don't feel like doing anything the rest of the day. Yeah. And so more or less, like in a very generalized sense, like your body naturally tries to maintain homeostasis. So because you expended so much energy, your body pulls back and everything else. And you're yeah. almost at even kill. And so like right. I say that to say like, it's not as simple as like exercise more, burn more calories, lose weight. It's, it's a lot more complex than that. And the same way with this, like with religion, like it's not black and white, like I said, right? Like there's a lot of what ifs or in-betweens or like push and pull and paradoxes that we face. And uh... yeah, that's actually a really great analogy for life, you know? Yeah. That we, we want to maintain homeostasis. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is why, because there's just so many... 
psychological and social factors, right? Like I can imagine for you, it's very, very difficult because your whole family is in this. Oh yeah. You know? Um, and it's not just like you're a pastor's kid, you know? So I imagine like people and I, and I know people and I'm sure you do as well. Like your whole family um, is tied into this religion. So to leave the religion is to leave your family, you know, in essence. Yeah. Um, That's difficult. Well, especially because their whole life is grounded. In, like, like yeah. they literally built their whole life on this. Like we said at the very beginning, um, the way that we perceive and, and look through, of uh, um, look at life is always through a certain specific lens. And the question whether that lens is the right lens, right? It's a very dangerous thing, right? Yeah. So again, like my if if we were to go back to my the example of my and the illustration of my parents, like they built this thirty years of their life with the family, with all the kids, throwing out like all of their career, like like hopes and and dreams on this single idea of this specific idea of religion, not just religion, but like this doctrine and denomination within yeah. within like it is a very very it is a it is a like you take anything out and the whole thing crumbles. I said, huh. of course, of course it makes sense that they, it would, I, I would understand why they would not want to risk challenging any of those thoughts. Like it would be, it would, you would have to, like, if I were in that position and I said, like, maybe I was wrong about this, I would basically be telling myself like the past 30 years of my life has not been the honest truth. Yeah. And I've thrown it away for yeah. this. Yeah. For this belief or ideology. But that that kind of dissonance again is not people. Some, a lot of people won't wouldn't be able to handle that, and so people don't push into or progress into that, and they'd rather stay in the state of existence that they are. Yeah, in fact, I, I wanted to ask you, man. In the last two, maybe three years, you've been, you know, deconstructing. Has this been like a hard process for you? You know, did you oh, did you feel yeah. that like? real cognitive dissonance or like loss, like what you were talking about is like this loss of identity and seeing how, I mean, this was our whole lives, right? And we poured in, you know, a good couple of decades into our beliefs. Like, yeah. was that, was that difficult for you? It wasn't, it wasn't right. Because in a sense, I mean, like, yeah, you, I, I feel like I did have to throw away a lot of these understanding. Well, it was, it was hard, but also liberating at the same time, hmm. right? Um, no. Because, again, my understanding of life and of God, it had, it had to fit within a specific construct. And everything out that didn't fit within it was I, I had to either blatantly ignore or run away from, like, if it didn't fit within my understanding of what reality should have looked like and what yeah. God, what made sense of God, like what, what else can you do? You either run away from it or you face it and say like, something's not right here. It's you or me. What's <laughs> going on. Right. And so yeah. again, to have, I think once I came to a point and said like, this may not be it. And then in, in, in starting the process of deconstruction is very liberating. Cause like, again, th I think the statement, I don't know is so powerful. It's so powerful to every, like to it to say that to people, right? Because people are just like, like, well, how is he so confident in his not knowing, right? And I think that's how a lot of people feel, right? Or if, if somebody even asks you, like, how do you feel? And you're just like, I don't really know. Hmm. I yeah. mean, why is that a bad answer? It's it's, it's a powerful expression, right? Um, of where you're at, uh, and so like. I, I think it's open. I mean, as hard as it's been, and it's uh, as hard as it, as it is even now, being still being in the state of just really not knowing, understanding, but being okay and content with that, has opened my mind and my path, my, my life to like a possibility of. Before, whenever I started deconstructing, I was like, okay, like this is not the Christian God, right? That I grew up with. Like, I don't, I don't know that God really fits into this, this framework of Christianity that. Um, that I grew up with and I built over the past 20, 25 years of my life. But now I feel like because I've removed that shell and that structure out from God and from Christianity, I'm like, God could be so much bigger, so much mm. more. Yeah. Right. And it, and it, and it, 
and it puts life in, in so much of a more, I don't there's I mean, like, I feel like it's end, like there's endless possibilities to not just my life, but, but just to life in general, right. And to people and what they're capable of, 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 of doing. And um, even, even with God, right. Before God was like right and wrong, yes, you know, like yes or no, mm -hmm. good or bad, and and if you say like life is not black and white, good or bad, it's it's a, I mean, it's a gray, it's it's whatever, right? It's whatever you make of it, and um, even if you were to go with like the the analogy and the illustrations of scripture, like the paradox of how God's fully in control, and yet we're still interacting, engaging, and He chooses and allows us to have some role in making decisions and how things like unfold. Like, I think that's encouraging, right? Uh, Abraham, like negotiated with God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah, seen, man. that's seen many times throughout scripture. And I'm just like, well, like if, if a, if a man, a simple man who, you know, had nothing going for him can negotiate with God, like, are we really going to say that we truly understand like God and his nature and what he has in plan and what he thinks? I wouldn't listen to Abraham. <laughs> that guy was <laughs> by paper. Most people in the Bible, the people that we look up to and the forefathers, they were, they made some really dumb decisions. Right. Oh yeah. yeah man. Absolutely. Like even David, I'm just like, dude, that guy was a whack job. Right. And like an <laughs> adulterer and he murdered someone. Right. He was a pushover father. Like, I'm just like, but again, like God chose those people. And we're, we look at him, we're just kind of like, I, I don't know that I really understand God. Like he says, we, we think that God stands up for these things. And he's just like, God's like, look, I pick on whoever I want, right? I do whatever mm -hmm. I want. I'm like, so why, why do we put a frame or structure around them, right? Or a box around them and act yeah. like we know what he expects from us. Yeah, I think that's one of my main contentions with Christianity is that it puts things in a black and white frame. Yeah. yeah. Even though, like you said, when you read the Bible, there's a lot of gray, man. In fact, the, you know, the, the entire Bible is the, the word Bible means library. Mm -hmm. So there's like a wide variety of views of God. Yeah. Having its own dialogue. Yeah. You know? So it's not, it's like literally within the con, you know, the very uh, inherent nature of the Bible is there's dialogue, there's gray, there's, there's not just one, like, this is the one view we have to make it fit, you mm -hmm. know? And so, in fact, I think, I think it's, it's uh, the way that Jesus goes about within a New Testament of performing miracles was, was that it was, everything was unconventional. All the miracles were not done a specific way, right? Because I think it was like, I think it's metaphorical for, for it saying like, look, like there is no one way. There is no formula. Like you can't understand me or put me in a box. So stop trying to understand how or what I'm going to do. Like I'm going to do it and I'll do it one way or another, right? Yeah. Um, and that's that reversal. Way, like, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, and so yeah, that's right, kind man. of how I, yeah. And so when people are like, do you pray? I'm just like, no, I don't. I believe in a God, but I don't feel like I have the need to pray either. Right. I'm just like, I'm at a point to where like, I feel like he, he or it or whatever, like if it knows, it knows if it doesn't, well then why pray to it? Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think if you want to pray, pray, if you don't, you don't. Sure. And I, yeah. I understand prayer now in a different way, you know? I feel like a lot of these practices within within religion and Christianity, though, is more so for the individual than actually for God. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And so there, yeah. there's been neuroscience studies to um, measure the effect of prayer on theists specifically. And it has very similar effects to meditation. Sure. But it only works if you believe it. Sure. So it's only theists. Atheists, when they pray, they don't get the effects. Right. So in the same in the same way, like why would I pray if I'm not sure if, if it worked or not? Like, and, and that's why I don't. Yeah, yeah. No. Because it's not being true to my convictions, right? Right, right, right. You got to do that's what why works you, for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I have I have faith that I walk throughout my life day to day, 
and that whatever happens is being guided or directed or, or influenced, right? Or being led in a certain direction by God or, or, or whoever or whatever, right? Yeah, so in so that still sense- hold, You still hold on to that idea. I do, like it's, it's, again, it's that paradox of like, I have no control over, like in, in the end, like we matter, but we don't, mm. right? Does my yeah. actions or thoughts affect? I mean, it, my actions and thoughts affects people around me and everybody around and, and 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 those within my vicinity in my life. But at the same time, like it doesn't at the same time, right? You know it's what like I mean? One person, yeah, oh. right. We are we are a speck in the dust, right? Mm. Um, and so again, like I I don't pray, but I believe that like if there is a God, like He is directing my steps in that sense, um, and that like things are coming my way as they need to and they're leaving as they need to right and i think that's one of the reasons why i don't stress about i i go to sleep just fine i don't have a guilty conscience like i don't right <laughs> and that's honestly man what you described is i think true prayer yeah well when living yeah simply, living yeah yeah just having that understanding and trust and faith and, and living and being like it's like oh but you need to consciously pray i'm just like like dude like who what is prayer actually for like who is it for does God need me to like vocally speak to him? Is he that desperate for my attention? Right. Or is, or is it like in a relationship setting, like is knowing and trusting without saying to your spouse, like, like having full confidence, like I'm here with you. I, I, I know you're there. I know that you will support me whenever I need it. And even when you're not there and I don't hear you and see you, like, I know you're supporting me and loving me. Like, is that not more powerful than, and so like, I'm not saying that. And then people are like, oh, well, it'd be nice to hear it. I'm just like, yeah, cause you're insecure and you need to hear it. <laughs> or, or like, it's a good gesture regardless. But if that's the foundation of your relationship, it is not a strong trusting relationship. Right. Um, and so if, uh, the analogy breaks down because we as humans, all of us has insecurity and all of us has breaking points or like we go back and forth be between being secure and insecure. But between a God who's infinite and me as a person, like I'm just like, I don't know God and I think you're there and I believe you're there. And I trust that you're directing me every day to day. And like, I'm frustrated at times, but like, I know you know that. And like, like this is, I, I feel like that's more genuine and that's more faithful to my feelings. And he as a God, or I'm not he, but like not gender, but right. like he, it, she, it. Yeah. it understands that and honors that more in my faith than actually going before it in prayer. The prayer aspect, I forgot who it was. It was, um, I, I forgot who, what the quote was, but it was something like prayer is not to change God's mind, but it's more so to position ourselves to what God is doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. I think it's, a, and then when people are like, have you thought about, or like, exactly. or atheists or, or agnostic, or like, have you like meditated or like, you know, journaled about it? I think it's the same thing. I think it yeah. just positions yourself. Yeah. That's a great point, man. And the way you articulated that, that's actually like helping me and reminding me like, yeah, this is, I think this is true prayer. Yes. Positioning yeah. yourself. Yeah. That's really what it is. Yeah, yeah. man. Thanks. I think a lot of it, man. And when you start, and like I said, when you start seeing a lot of those correlations between just like, like even going through therapy, like you've gone through therapy, I've gone through therapy, I've gone through a short period of it. Um, better help was great, blah blah blah. <laughs> <We're not sponsored. laughs> um, but I, I went through that during COVID, uh, and and just realizing and seeing like the processes that they go through and helping you walk through your thoughts, right? Um, when you really slow it down, and even again, a lot of the ways that we talked about before you and I, uh, the, the, the techniques, the, the way that, that very good, like pastors or spiritual leaders go about in talking to congregations or speaking a message, right. It's, it's, it's fascinating how it's like, you know, you, you enter a service, praise and worship, you gather together, you, you get synchronized in this meditative state, right? Very mm -hmm. suggestible, right? And you open yourself up to this idea. And then you have a person that comes and speaks this very well generalized message about, about whatever, I don't know. Faith, right? love, hope. Faith, love. Yeah. God is there for you. He's going to answer you. Like, like put, your, put your faith, put your trust in him. Like release your problems to him, right? And know that he'll answer you. And and, and then with, again, with the, like the majority of people, 95, 98% of people that are there with issues and problems and circumstances, because everybody has problems, right? 
it's going to attach or cling to you or anchor to some point within the sermon. And because they're in that very statistical state, like, <sighs> and I wonder sometimes if that's what Paul meant. He's all like, why do I, why do, why are you guys having to gather up? And be baby fed with spiritual milk. Like you guys should be able to do this by yourself. Like, why are we like well, I well no, I do think he he would have condoned gathering. Gathering is I do fine. think that yeah, gathering. Yeah. 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 I, I might have a different opinion on that. I think um I don't know, man. I think Paul is maybe Gnostic. I think maybe. I mean, who knows, right? Um, I mean, the way he perceives himself to be at times, he's like, hey, look, I, I need to become whatever they need me to be, like, in order to convey, like, the message of Christ. No. Oh. Right? He's like, to the heathens, I need to become a heathen. To the pagans, the pagans, right? Like, he's like, culture that I'll adapt, right? Oh, yeah, man. But I guess he the ultimate that. question. No, go ahead. Well, what's the ultimate question? The ultimate question is like, well, if he was adapting and changing and um to fit into wherever he needed to 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 convey the message what was the message well whenever jesus was asked what the message was what is the ultimate commandments he's all like love god love your neighbor as yourself and that's kind of what i stick to like and that's the reason why i again i i like and i i like and i you know i i am um with a lot of the principles within christianity right like whether it's because I grew up with it or it's just because like I look at everything else and say like, yes, like this is good. Right. I stick to those. But like if it if if my status and label as a Christian was solely dependent on the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I don't know. Yeah, I, that's hard to say. But if it was but instead, if it was if my status as a Christian was dependent on 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 the teaching of love God. Right. With all your heart, mind, soul and spirit and love your neighbor as yourself. I can stick with that. Yeah. The rest is just commentary, man. Well, you know, that's no, it's fun commentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I'm sure I've I've beat this dead horse um, with you um, and with other people, but I, you know, and I, I've told you a lot of times, but having like this this heart awakening when my heart opened, it felt like like the New Testament made sense in mm. that moment. Like I understood. The meaning of the new testament it wasn't the letter it was the spirit sure. which is love yeah and it's like i i'm like oh i get it i understand it's not all about all the whatever freaking commentaries and trying to exegete the text it's just like oh it's just love yeah and like that's that you know and i think if if that's what christianity is about i'm 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 down sure I'm down. That's no. a, yeah now it's a hard message. Let's let's not be, um, let's not like uh, uh, dumb it down or um, what's the right. word? I don't know. Make it palatable and easy because like love it, it, can, it can be hard, man. <laughs> when you oh, hate somebody, hard. when it's you don't hard. like someone. Well, it's not. It's it's <laughs> right? it's, it's yeah. like true love yeah. is like it's yeah. selfless, right? Just like you know we we hear within church is selfless, like. Yeah. It's 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 unbiased, right? Um, it's selfless. It's it's giving of yourself um, without expecting anything back, right? Yeah, it's not yeah. easy. It's not easy, you know. Uh, but you see, you see specs. But like with that same point, like even within those that aren't Christian, like you see specs of that. You see, you see love like portrayed outside of Christian circles too. Oh, dude, and that's even and more that's so sometimes. Yeah. like oftentimes. And that's, the, that's my biggest, I mean, that, again, like going back to this previous video that we did to you, like that's, that was the biggest thing is it's like, you see specks of it here and there in this world, if not more so outside of church at times, right? I mean, you see it in church a lot too, right? Yeah. But like, if it's present outside of church too, outside of quote unquote Jesus, um, but amongst those that still believe in in God and and the value of, of each other, um, and other people and individuals, like, you know, it it just it doesn't make sense. Is it, again, yeah. like if, if if it's portrayed as you cannot love except without Christ or God within or the Holy Spirit within your life, and you see love within the interactions of others outside of the church, you're just like, wait a minute, 
hold on, this is a black and right. white statement, and I'm not seeing the black and white here. Right, right. Yeah. And I think that's actually part of, well, maybe let, let, let me stop sharing for a second. So I think we'll probably just, and, and if, if we can go back to the to the video, we will. Because I know you, uh, you got to go in, what, like 20 minutes? Ah, uh, yeah, that's fine. 20-ish. Yeah. But uh, I figure we just talk, man. Because that, that, that was fine. actually one of the things that led me to my deconstruction was even though like intellectually I understood like of course other people you know they're human too and right but they need Jesus but me actually for for a moment I don't know what it was I guess it was because I was in a desperate point you know and I was trying to learn and I was trying to understand why I was the way I was and what what I could do to change and that happens in a community and just seeing other people, non-Christians as well, who are like, they want a better life. They're yeah. dealing with issues and, and they want to work on themselves. Right. And sometimes they have really great answers for change or a perspective on life. And just seeing that, like in that moment when I was vulnerable and just seeing like they're human too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like, what is this black and white to where I'm separating us, the believers, we have the truth and we're saved and we have a personal relationship with Jesus. And now these other heathens, well, they're just so lost. And, you know, like it, it just like, it felt, yeah, like this, this black and white divide that dehumanized people. Mm -hmm. So that, that was, that was one of the things that kind of launched me in my deconstruction. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also just got so tired of being so passive. Huh? And this is a switching gear. This is a switching gear. What but do you mean like, passive? Yeah. I think that the, the church culture in some sense, like whether it was conscious or not, I think it suppresses people's in some culture of Christianity, suppresses people's ambition and desire to do more and do greater. Oh yeah. I think that would be, most of Western Christianity, and <laughs> what right. we yeah. what we label as Christian, yeah, that's sure, that's right? Yeah, on the money. absolutely. Yeah. Oh right. yeah, dude. And then and then again, like even this even this ideology of like, hey, like just cast it to like cast it off to God, like let like let Jesus take the wheel. Yeah, right. Yeah. In some sense, it's almost like it almost relinquishes the the ownership, right, and the control that that empowers us to make choices sometimes and grow. Yeah. Right. Um, it's like, Oh, like God willed it. Like, so, so don't worry about it. Or like if you're in, in, a, in a tough spot or situation, instead of sitting down and, and growing from it and like figuring out like, what can I do? Like, how can I continue to grow? How can I get out of the situation? Oftentimes we just sit there and wait and say like, God will take care of it and handle it. Right. Um, mm. Or just like even just like entrepreneur, like one of the biggest dissonance I felt was I looked at a lot of entrepreneurs and like entrepreneurs are very, uh, I mean, it's a vicious world when it comes to business, business leadership, like being competitive, especially in like a capitalistic market. Right. And you have to have this per like you, you see it most times when, when you talk to like owners of businesses, like they are like you have to be very, very cutthroat and cut it like very cutthroat, very competitive. Right. Uh, and I always felt and thought like, man, that's not Christian. Like, right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, but it was also interesting because I'm like, why is, and then so yeah, like reflecting on that, say like, why is that bad? Right. Why is being competitive bad? Why is being ambitious bad? Why are, why is, right. des why is desiring money bad in a sense? Right. Mm. Um, yeah. uh, and, and then as I've shifted over to this mentality of like, you know, like, again, I, I one day want to ha have my own business or open my own, my business or gym. Uh, yeah, the way you think you, you can't be passive. Like you have to take ownership over everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and when I talk to people now, especially the past year or two, everyone's like, you, you place too much, you know, you place too much on yourself. Like you, uh, you worry too much or, you're too analytic. I'm just like, I have to be like, if I, ha if I want to get to a point where I, um, 
have all these, you know, uh, people working under me and systems working under me and, and I'm trying to grow a business like who else can you turn to? Who else can you blame and push it off to? Nobody. I, right. I, and, and I don't feel like like I, I wonder at times I'm like, so I look at families or people or friends that I knew from church and everyone's so docile and passive. Right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing and there's nothing wrong with that. But just saying that it, it, it kind of infuriates me inside, too, because I see so many people because we've been so uh, with again, within certain not all like there's some churches that are more so like on the opposite end. But um, for the vast majority that I've seen, like people just be, become so accustomed to being so, so quiet and, and um, I'm not sure what the right suppressed. word is. Like, su yeah. Suppressed in a sense. Right. Yeah. Um, to where they can't make decisions. They avoid conflicts. They don't run into the fire. They run away from constantly. Right. Mm. And where the challenge, the growth and the opportunity to become, become something more at times is by running into the fire. Like, People just run from those things, right? Uh, mm. Because we've kind of been trained in that way, right? Get that. Yeah. Yeah, and I see that myself. And I've seen that. And I think it's it's not just Christianity, although I do think Christianity lends itself to exacerbate that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. I think it's in a lot of spiritual circles. Sure. This, this tendency to... to um, defer responsibility yeah and hyper spiritualize things yeah to the point where you're not like it's like you're not even living life like truly and i yeah. guess i guess you could you could argue too like that's part of the nature of i think people and human beings right like there's this mentality where we are always wanting to gravitate towards having a leader and being directed and led right um old testament right i mean the whole time God was like, you don't want a leader, like, just follow me. You don't want a leader. And they're like, we want a leader. We want a leader, <laughs> right? Uh, we want to be told what to do. And we want to have a king over us like every other country, like every other tribe out there, right? Like, um, and I think a part of that is just also just human nature, right? Um, where we don't want to push, where we do want to just maintain yeah. homeostasis and an equilibrium, right? And not be challenged in that sense. Agreed, but... Man historically too we can't we can't deny the fact that also that religion like not christianity but religion in general has also been used to suppress specifically suppress and control people in human population too oh yeah oh. so i th i think i think i wonder at times like and maybe and and even sometimes not even intentionally but to maintain um, a sense of control over people, right? Yeah. yeah. Is ultimately what is, and so like remnants of that, of how do we, how do I know that this is actually for my good intent, like my well being as a human being, right? When I'm following someone, or if it's just a matter of like, they just don't want to lose the control over me. So like, um, I, I would hear, I would see and see, especially when I was in church a lot of times where people would, join a church for a couple months or the, our church for a couple months, not my parents, but like the general, general uh, congregation. And then they would try to leave. And like the pastors would be like, Hey, like, I don't think this is right. You shouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. And this, the Holy Spirit like, told me. Yeah. You're right. Right. And I'm just like, I'm like, well, like, how do you, yeah. You can't argue that, with that. You can't argue right, with that. <laughs> exactly. You know? Right. And I and bet just, yeah. my, my bet is though, consciously they think, they they truly believe yes, that that's what, that's yes, what I mean. the Holy yeah. Spirit told me. Yeah. 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 I get it. So yeah, it's like that's, this this unintentional need for control. That's what scares me. Yeah. Is that I is that especially when you are in this hyper like leadership role in a spiritual context, like and especially after you've worked like you you two like or like we've seen and worked with and and been exposed to a, a wider i think now within our society we know and understand a lot more about uh mental illness too mm. uh, there's a lot of crazy people out there and <laughs> people aren't as smart as we thought they were right the more you interact with people you're just like 
ah, like there's an average IQ. You realize, <laughs> you realize that for an average IQ to be the average, there are some people above it, but there are also a lot of people below it too. And, uh, and you, and I, I look at, I look, I, I see that and I'm just like, how do I know that you're not like, I think that's, the, that's the, that's the, one of the scariest part about religious settings is that, um, I, I shouldn't. <laughs> are you it saying, attract- are you saying that maybe religious settings tend to attract people lower IQ? It can. I think it, I think I, it can. I'm not saying it all. Uh, yes. Yes. Because there's, yeah. I, I, I do get that because. Like a more mainstream Christianity where people, you know, they need hope. They need to know that God cares for them and have faith and whatnot. I I can see that like it, it could. There's also the, the Christianity that I was more a part of, which was like the philosophical Christianity. That's a very small portion though. We could, I know. Yeah, I agree. That's what I'm saying. Well, well, I do think that it's very prevalent because or I guess like this, let me, how do I word this? Hmm. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll take that back. What I would say is Western Christianity is mainly just in their heads. Like it's a lot of just talk theology and yeah, Bible study. And let's understand what the scriptures say. You know, it's a very white way to 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 do christianity sure right um and so there's not a lot of whole lot of like feeling into your body or being in your body or anything Mm -hmm. like that so i do think like when you look at the history of christianity it's a very intellectual tradition yeah however yeah like for most people 21st century yeah i could see why it attracts lower iq people and they don't need to understand (sighs) shit like the doctrine of the Trinity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who does? Who who the hell well, understands I, I, that? You know. And I think that's. I mean, the, you yeah. also see this, like, oh my gosh, it it, it drives me insane. People like. Are you talking about your church? Like, no, not my church. It drives me insane. Like people of our generation, or like even young, like it's. I don't know. I I I don't. Uh, not here with the younger generation too. It's a generational thing, you know. Yeah, well, maybe, and well, that's what I was thinking. But I'm like, no, like when people say, like, oh, like just the vibe and like you know, like the energy and like, I'm like, it's it's so there's no intellect behind it, absolutely, like absolutely, right? When when they talk, like when when they talk about spirituality, it's all about this feeling and and sense and. I don't. Okay, let me think about this. Because because the spiritual, I I would actually maybe disagree with you there. Yeah. Okay. And I think this goes back to like personality types and the very nature of spirituality. The very nature of spirituality is is that it's not exactly like a science. Sure. Or it's not right. It's it's it is the realm of like sensing and feeling and vibe and energy. Which is like not well, something you can really. Yeah. It's hard to write. I mean, you can write, you can definitely write things and, and pontificate and like explain things. Mm-hmm. But that's again, like in the realm of the analyzing. Yeah. And, and spirituality, in my opinion, is something that needs to be experienced. So that's, that's where you get the vibe and the feeling and all that jazz. Now I could see how maybe, um, some I people guess, are maybe yeah. too far to one extreme and and it's like it's like they're not living on planet earth dude I, it's not even that i just don't trust people's intuition or judgment okay, whatsoever right. very well like and that's I, I i see myself drifting more towards being so so logical because of that it's because i'm like you guys are off your rockers like you guys don't even know understand you got you don't even understand what you're feeling right um you're on so like nowadays so many people are on so many medications right um yeah it's it drives me crazy like there is no stability um within a lot of people's lives and i'm just like i'm supposed to trust your intuition and your guts on how you feel 
I'm like, I can pretty pretty much like rationalize, like and give an explanation for everything that you're feeling. Not everything. You could, you could, you could. Yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah. I agree, man. And so, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I just. It's hard, man. But it's uh, but at the same like, and that's the thing that, and like, I think that's one of my my downsides is that I analyze and over, overthink and over process so much too, right? And yeah. so, it gets in the way. Um, but again, like, if this is how God created me, well, then like, am I to blame for it, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you could argue that. I mean, I don't know, right? Like, y- you could argue that this is one of the things, maybe that um that you want to balance out maybe this is why you're here part of why you're here i don't like i mean who knows right like that's not i'm not saying that as a freaking fact right yeah but dude it's so hard let let, let me ask like when when you were more certain of christianity when you were really committed and gung-ho and speaking in tongues and all that did you feel like you were less analytical or you were you just as analytical? Um, I was just as analytical. Okay. Because because I would still be asking a lot of questions. Okay. Um, and a lot of those questions would be pigeonholed, right? It would give me a very loose, loose ended answer, and and to be like, "That's the Holy Spirit. We don't know how it works. Mm. <laughs> That's God. Mm. We don't know how it works, right?" Yeah, and I'm just yeah. like, "Okay, right?" Like I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Hmm. Well, I guess the reason I ask is because, um, you know, obviously you spoke in tongues. I don't know if you still do. Uh, yeah. And 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 you laid hands on me, and I spoke in tongues. Yeah. Um, and that was a very non-analytical process. We'll put yeah. it that way. Yeah. Well. <laughs> you you wanted to believe and i believe and that's true man it was a it was an amazing experience yeah that i, I mean, think that everyone could could do not just quote unquote christians or spirit-filled christians or whatever right and i'm just and that's um, the thing I, I again like going back to it i'm just like you're gonna see what you want to see and you're gonna you're gonna feel what you want to feel Right. And so I, I, again, that's why I have a hard time with that whole, and especially with speaking in tongues, like the whole process is so bizarre to me. Uh, Cause especially most church settings are like, it's going to sound like this, or you'll have people like screaming into you. You'll yeah, have yeah. people screaming into ears and speaking in tongues. And yeah. it's very, it's very, it's a very high stress, like very uh, yeah. pressure, pressurized like situation. Right. Where it's like you yeah. have, you're sur- basically surrounded by everybody and saying like, this is what you need to do. And this is what it needs to sound like. And yeah. if you don't, you're going to hell. That's basically you're what it was. Oh wow! You're, you're, you're going to hell. Like mm. that's that's pressure right there. <laughs> yeah, man. That's pr- yeah. Like, absolutely that's pressure. Right? Right so there. like, why wouldn't somebody yeah. speak in tongues or make sounds with their mouths? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but yeah. I but I, at the same time, like I was having this conversation yesterday, actually yesterday night with a with a with a couple and. Um, Cause you know, they're Christian and I'm, and they're asking me about all this stuff. And, uh, and I said like, look, like whether or not somebody speaks in tongues or not, like, frankly, I don't care because even now I'm just like, the people ask me what harm is there? The only harm I could be, I could see being done is if that's being like lorded over, like in terms of authority, like, yeah. Hey, I speak in tongues. And so that's God's telling me this or that. I'm a, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's where it gets dangerous. But, um, where I'm okay with it is if, you know, I think, you know, a lot of charismatic or Pentecostals like to use the, the, the verse where Paul says, like, you know, it's the groaning of the inward spirit, right? Of the spirit mm-hmm. within, like praying to God. And I and I do believe that, like, a part of that can be and was valid for me. Because even when I spoke in tongues a lot and prayed a lot, it was just like, it was just this sense and this burden and this, like, this sorrow and sadness or like a pain, for, like, of, I'm grieving for the world, right? Mm-hmm. And like praying and like not having any tangible words to say specifically but like it was just me crying like you know like when you're just crying right yeah. like you don't know yeah. what to say and and i believe that like those sounds or those like the, the intangible words like god understands whether it's english french spanish like what does it matter right mm-hmm. god understands the intent and the desires and and what our thoughts and our feelings are even without any word that is spoken and said and so like do i have a problem with somebody speaking in tongues when they're praying with like to god i don't think so you don't even have to say anything and that's my whole point 
I don't have to say anything in prayer verbally for God to, for me and God to have a conversation, right? Yeah. Is what I believe. It's the position. Um, yeah, exactly. Again, it's yeah. back to the position, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, but when it's, whenever it comes to a point where it's like, you got to, you know, it's a requirement or it's a stamp of God's approval or God's giving you a specific gift. And so now people are wanting, you know, like it's just, it gets really messy. Hmm. Hmm. I do think people have certain specific gifts, but I can see how that could divide people. I, I think in my my personal per, like perception on gifts now, or I think it's kind of like when Paul says like pray for those, like pray for those gifts. Right. I think we are naturally inclined to specific things. Yeah. For, yeah. for I like I've I've always like I when I was younger I, and, and so I questioned everything. Even when I was from at a very young age, I questioned everything. Mm. Um and then as I was grow I mean, as I grew up in church, like my my favorite books were like Ecclesiastes and Proverbs and I would pray and journal I would pray and journal no no lie I would pray and journal every single day for like five six years like give me wisdom like give me wisdom like give me wow. wisdom um and so I think again the positioning of my mind to desire wisdom um it's kind of like that cycle uh, I forgot what that effect is called in psychology whatever you um prime your prime yourself to look out for something and you only see that like more and more consistently, right? Not because it's right. yeah, not because it's there all of a sudden, but because it's always been there. But now that you're specifically looking and like it out, yeah. right? Exactly. I think that's what it, that's my perception on on honing in on these gifts is that I don't know. I think people's intuitions, like if you're in situations and you're picking up on social cues and behavior and mannerisms and behavior, like behavioral things, facial, like all those. I think those could be trained. Um, same thing with, and I think those, that's how like those spiritual gifts are more or less developed. Yeah. Um, it's more of the conscious willing and desire to develop those things. Right. And you develop that, that kind of like that set, like sixth sense. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I think that's for the most part, I do think some people just have an innate ability to do some things just better. So like but for, for whatever for example, the reason. Yeah. I think genetics, man, or you could maybe come from right. a spiritual standpoint. They were just whatever they were chosen or, or whatnot. I don't know. Um, but like something like, um, you know, obviously I'm in hypnosis. There are some people who just hit the genetic lottery when it comes to hypnosis. Like they will literally hallucinate. And like, it's amazing for me as a hypnotist. Yeah. Because it's like I I seem like a god. I feel like 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 I tell us you know what I'm saying it's just amazing. Now I don't think er not everyone is like that. Now is is hip going into hypnosis and being suggestible and using your imagination is that a skill that can be developed? Absolutely. And I yeah. I'm developing that every day and I'm getting better. Um, and I do think I have some innate ability, but like not compared to some of these other people. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. You know. Yeah. And so I do think. Um, yeah, again, like some people do have just this innate ability. Um, I don't see visions. I mean, I see some things, right? Like un the unconscious mind sure. will, 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 but I don't see like an open vision or like yeah. I don't talk to spirit guides or angels or whatever. Maybe they exist, maybe they don't. Like, this is not my thing. But I know people who claim to do. And they, right. I don't think they're lying. They actually like, truly believe that they're talking to a spirit I guide. Think they, yeah. They truly, like, yeah. I believe and, that they believe too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So, and that's like just not my thing. Or like yeah. some people are like really into um, tarot card reading or like yeah. what, what we would call prophecy or words sure. of knowledge or whatever. And, um, you know, they, they, they just seem to really like gravitate towards that and, and, and do really well in that particular uh, quote unquote spiritual gifting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I do think there's like an innate ability on some things like personality types and things like that personality types i think genetic and that's the reason why i i kind of i kind of stray away from more of the quote unquote like spirit like calling it a spiritual gift hmm. i mean i guess it could be i guess you could if you bend it like somewhere or another you could call it a spirit like spiritual but like if it's inherent if it's genetic because some people are more yeah i mean genetically speaking like genetically speaking there's 
something out there for almost everything, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, some people hallucinate more. Some people are more susceptible to other stimulants <laughs> and drugs than other people, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't ever dream. Like, I, I sleep eight, nine hours, and I don't dream. Like, I, I don't know. And mm. some people just have lucid dreams, like, every night. Right, and they're, right. And people are like, I'm tired of it. Like, I have so many, like, it's so real. I'm just like, it's just people are just different in that kind of sense, too. Yeah. Um, some people, like, stimulants and drugs hit completely differently. Some people, it might not hit them, like, hit them at, at all right mid um or like even like there's something simple as caffeine right yeah. or like cilantro taste is a is oh a, yeah dude i can't well see that's a genetic thing it's like it's just like yeah. you either have it or you don't right and so right so if it's explainable in that sense or if it can be honed in and learned even more on top of the just the, the genetic stuff i'm just like I don't, is that really a gift is that a spiritual gift or again is this like I see everything within the spiritual, like within the biblical context of like the site within the realms of like the psyche and like psychological psychological development. Now I'm just like, is this all just like self hypnosis and self realization and actualization and just meditation and mindfulness and self awareness? And if that's the case, why is this any different from any other religion out there, right? Or any thought of religion out there um, and these principles? Um, because again, if we take away Christ and, or, from, or Jesus from the center of Christianity, like what differentiates it from any other good, well-intended, like core philosophy of any like religion out there? Not much, right? And so when people, and again, full circle, I guess, is like, would you classify yourself as a Christian? Like, I guess, like according to the standards, if it's, if it's Christ has to be the center, like I wouldn't, right? But again, is is my leaning towards Christianity because I grew up with it and those principles and like, that's just how... I make sense of the vast majority of my life in my world. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I'd say so. I'd say, I think maybe we're in uh, similar positions. I think I'm more woo woo than you are. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, like I, I see a lot of good in Christianity. Yeah. Despite absolutely. my, my uh, criticisms of it. Mm -hmm. you know and and maybe it's because i have to resolve the cognitive dissonance somehow of being a christian for so many years or yeah. you know just embed in my subconscious mind somehow right um but like yeah i'm like you know i do see value in it it's not and it's it is it is the tradition i grew up with it is my yeah. tradition and i wouldn't necessarily have it any other way yeah absolutely you know so I find it well, funny, like we're, we're in similar boats, and I think we gravitate towards each other because of that. Like we have that same like, and and you say you're more spiritual, and we, and and it's funny because like you deal with like more of the mental and the psyche within your hypnotherapy like practice and stuff like that. And I'm just like I'm like physical, like I coach and work out, and I'm yeah. in tune with my physical body, like the stimulus, right? Like what I eat, like visually seeing. Um, and all that stuff. And so like, it's, it's interesting. I think the perspectives we're, we're more or less like on the same boat or same page. It's just the viewpoints are different because we come from different sides of it. Right. Um, so anyways, it's just interesting to kind of observe in that aspect too. Yeah. Oh man. No, yeah. I feel like we talked about a lot of good stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't really get much of the, the the actual like review. I don't I don't um, think we needed to like, yeah, you know, like yeah. if somebody wants to go through that, it's fine. Like the last episode was a lot more about just like the oneness and like I think it was more of our kind of uh, what is it called? Our um, voyage off into like we're on this journey now and like we're, we're leaving Christianity and like we're we, we're not, you know, we're not sure where we're going. We're not sure um, where we're headed to, but we're going right. And now we're we've been on this journey for like, you know, two, three years. And it's, you know, now we're just kind of like, all right, like we've been places, we've seen things, we've experienced things. And um, it's, it is interesting. Like, and you've said this in person to me a few times, like how we have kind of circled back in some essence, right? Like, right. Because like, you know, the, one of the biggest fears within people within religion or even Christianity that like, I know it's like, once they leave, they're gone. Like, you know, like they won't ever come back. You go out to the world and you're, you're lost forever. Right. Mm. um and it's like in us in some sense no like i come back stronger but in other sense yeah like i've dropped off a lot of the the prior um expectation and knowledge that like the church held for me right but like my desire for and my 
understanding of God, I don't feel like it's gotten any smaller. In fact, it's gotten bigger just in a very. Yeah. Uh, it's more expansive, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a different perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And as we like grow and evolve our faith, our spirituality will grow. You know what makes it significantly hard? Family. Fucking dating, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I agree, man. I, I think that's because we're in Dallas and, you know, so. Well, there's that, but like. Finding someone that's actually going to talk about this. And well, not, with you. we'll talk, talk. They don't have to agree, but like somebody who has the interest of the patients to sit down and be able, and, and really engage within the journey and the process, right? Man, that's hard. Cause like otherwise, like, what do you see? Like, what are you Christian? Like, ah, not really. And they're like, well, I'm gonna, <laughs> like, and then and then you could say, like, you know, on dating apps, it's like, what are you? Like, I'm spiritual. Uh, yeah, religious. you're right. And and that's what I put because I'm just that's like, it. I guess I'm not yeah. and then but at the same time, like it's just kind of like, but I I kind of am Christian and I'm like, I don't know what to put. I'm like, anyways. Progressive. There's so there's so much more background, right? And like we can spend like three, four, five hours talking about this. And uh, anyways, it, it drives me crazy. Um, yeah. Well, of course, Steve, you have to trust that God has someone for you. Take Taking that into my own hands. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like if I sat around and no, waited I agree. for somebody. Yeah. Absolutely. No, this is actually a great freaking topic because, and and like, I'm in kind of a little bit embarrassed to say this too. And, and you know, I'm still like figuring out this dating shit uh -huh. and social yeah dynamics and things like that right you know i think hopefully we'll, we all are in some respect yeah. but um yeah man like i think the structure and the belief system of christianity exacerbates this like social awkwardness you know like girls are just this other and you can't look at them because they're if you look at beings. them right they're, they're pure, pure. <laughs> and like they are yeah, not pure <laughs> Oh, you know, as a side note, the more um, quote unquote pure they seem on the outside, the more like nice and everything like like I, you know, I am repressed. and I was, you know, and I'm, I'm getting better. Yeah. But like, yeah, dude, the nicer they are, the more depraved and the more yes. yeah. <laughs> terrible, I mean, like, the more they're suppressing whole, all that stuff. Right. We, we could have a whole nother like oh, five yeah. hour conversation about this. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and like, I know you got like. Yeah. Yeah, and our experiences, but yeah, yeah, this is the reason why I still engage with it is because like I just I realized just like any other area of my life, like it is an area in which you must actively press into yeah. and and grow and get better at, and uh, especially if you're a Christian, you're off yes. on a shorter shorter limb. <laughs> Dude, yeah, it's no, you make a great point because just the dating advice and purity culture and christianity oh my god it's just horrid mm -hmm. it's just like okay there is some seed of truth there right the the whole message is like well you just got to pursue god sure just, just focus on god and but, there's this core truth of like hey you you want to be solid in your who you are and yourself yes you want to have a life yes yeah you want to have a vision purpose all that okay i get that but it's it's like it's said in a way that's not quite like that and it's to where it's very detrimental to actually, like you said, be active in the dating process, taking things into your own hands, stepping into tension, mm -hmm. learning the social dynamics, learning the psychology and things like that. Right. Sure. So you're right. Like that's, you know, it's, a, and again, it's a, they, they, they put it in a way that's very structured. This is the steps. This is the processes. If you're both only, if you're both intention is to be married, and yeah. to be serious and mm -hmm. knowing that you are for each other. And once you commit, it is non-negotiable. Like yeah. these, these are the steps. And if you're not following the steps, you should not even consider it. Yeah. Black and white, black, yep. and, black white. and white pressure, you know, and, and most, times, most times, how do you like, how do you find people? Like most people get together because they, it just happens. They just happen to be around mm -hmm. each other. It just happen to be friends or, or whatnot. And, you know, it wasn't this intent. And like, that's actually what drew away a lot of my potential interest. In, like early on, I pushed them away because I was always like, are we going to get married or not before we were even dating? Right. Mm. And because of this severe, okay. like harshness and the seriousness, like that detracts a lot of people.
Right. So dating has to lead to um, marriage. Unless unless you date within the church, which is it's kind of like incest, but that's the only way <laughs> that's the only way that like that's most true. Christ, that's the only way that Christians end up getting married, right? Because like they can't they can't they can't operate in a big like social setting outside. Yeah. Steve, that's your sister in Christ. How dare you look at your sister in Christ that She's way? She's hot. And that skirt, yeah. No, oh I'm man, you know, showing those ankles. Oh no. Yeah, no, my calves go there. Oh, those calves, man. Yeah, those calves get you. All right. Well, I gotta head I out. You gotta get Spe- out. Speaking of my parents, I gotta cook them a steak. Oh, cool, man. That's spent, nice. Spent two, spent two hours with them, and uh, that's my two hours of the week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Family. It's not always I easy. Mean, no, dude. it's re- it's people in relationships. It's not even just family. It's people in yeah. relationships aren't easy. But you know, but this is like, yeah. I mean, this is what life is about, right? Relationships, um, those around us, like what we make of it. And so, people are hard, but like it wouldn't be that fruitful or uh, adventurous without other people, <laughs> good yeah. or bad. You know, right? That's that's the whole mess of life, right? Yeah, relationships is messy and they're worthwhile. You ever you ever did the uh, the painting with it? We should go one time, like painting with a twist. No, I, yeah, Dude. I should do it sometime. I've done like two or three. I've done like three, and like at first you're just like you get so frustrated because you're like this looks like an utter mess, right? And at the yeah. end of it, it's like wow, that came out pretty good, right? Um, and of course, the more you do it, the better you get. But um, yeah, damn it, dude. I gave that one girl my painting. I wish I <laughs> should have kept I it. They, I should have kept it. It was really good too. I have her. I have her. Never mind. I'm not gonna say anything. I have her <laughs> painting, but mine was oh, so much right. better. <laughs> mine was so much better. Everybody was like, "Why'd you give it to her?" I'm just like, I thought it would be sentimental. I thought yeah. it'd be sentimental. You know, just it'd love. be cute if it worked out, right? It was a gamble. It was like, but yeah. Nope. It would it's also okay. been cute if you tattooed your, you know. <laughs> that would have been terrible if you dude, did, but you know. Dude, if I get a tattoo, it's going to have to be like super legit well done or oh, yeah. like very, very sentimental. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm very specific about my body. Uh, I get you. Yeah. Well, all right, man. All right, man. Thanks, thanks for having for, me back on. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Next time we'll talk about dating, dude. Dude, we'll talk hours uh, dating? on that. Hmm. Dating and relationships and like church culture, but I'll, oh, maybe this is for my podcast. Is that <laughs> all right? All right. We'll, we'll 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 talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, man. We'll see you. Have a good night. I'll see you.